Hello everyone. Well, in a previous video, we talked about how you can take your first steps to enjoying the comfort and the convenience of flying in private aircraft. Well, if you've tried chartering flights or used jet cards or membership programs, you may have got a taste for the high life. And now possibly you're ready to consider owning your own aircraft or perhaps just part of one. So I'm back here today with my colleague, Jennifer English, who is the editorial director of Business Jet Traveler magazine. She and her team have the inside track on how you can make the right move into aircraft ownership. Jen, welcome back. And buying your own aircraft seems like a massive leap for someone who's never done more than just riding as a passenger. So what's a good place to start for companies or individuals? You know, how, how do you know when you're ready to do this? Hi, Charlie. Um, that usually when you're at the point where you're flying 150 hours a year, 200 hours a year, and you're, you know that you're going to be committed to it for the next year or two, then you really want to start thinking about ownership in some capacity. And that can be through a fractional share or that can be through full ownership. Right, I see. Now, you mentioned fractional ownership. It sort of sounds a bit like timeshare, but I know it's, it's more sophisticated than that. Roughly speaking, how does fractional ownership work? Fractional ownership means that you actually own a portion of a plane. Um, so you can have a quarter share, a half share, or a full share. And generally, the shares are based on flying approximately 800 hours per year. So um, you can kind of do the math that way. You can get a quarter share, let's say, in a smaller aircraft like a Phenom. But depending on what company you're with, you can then have also have access to the rest of the aircraft in the fleet of the company. So for example, NetJets, which is a huge company that most people are familiar with, they have an enormous fleet. And so that gives you a much wider access. Whereas smaller fractional share providers such as PlaneSense, their fleet is only Pilatus aircraft. So you would only have access to Pilatus. Right. Good point. So let's say hypothetically the, the math works that they figure one aircraft would fly up to 800 hours per year. So logically, if you buy a quarter share, that gives you 200 hours, I guess. But the key point is that you don't, you're not literally having to fly the 200 hours in that one specific aircraft. You get you can use those hours on the equivalent aircraft across the fleet. Did I get that right? Is that kind of yeah? That's about to? right. Um, fractional ownership. It, it's interesting because from a cost standpoint, it's not necessarily more economical than even owning an aircraft outright yourself. But what you get with a fractional share is you have another company who's handling all of the details of full ownership, including managing the aircraft, getting the pilots and staffing it, doing all the maintenance, all the cleaning, everything is handled. And so for somebody who really values consistency and a certain level of product, and they want the same aircraft every single time that they fly, and you just want the assurances and not have to deal with any headaches, it's a great option. But we always recommend, especially with fractional, well, with anything, but especially with fractional shares, you really should get an attorney who understands the programs. There's two that we recommend who are wonderful. One is Fractional Law. The other one is Sharecraft Solutions. And those firms really know the ins and outs of fractional and they can give you great advice because you really have to think about fractional share as if you are an owner. And if you're not going to be committed for about five years, it doesn't really make sense. It won't pay off because you have to look into all of the financial repercussions and tax repercussions because it still is like owning an asset that will be depreciating over time. So you have to know the commitment that you're getting into. That's a good point. So in a way, fractional ownership, it spares you all the sort of nitty gritty worry of how on earth you'd hire pilots and actually manage an aircraft. But you, you stress there, it's a, it's a big, serious financial commitment. You know? And when you sign on that dotted line, you're signing up to all sorts of terms and conditions. You can't just yes. a month later decide, oh, this isn't for me, you know, off I go. Yeah. I mean, if you, I think even after two years, if you try to get out, you'll lose major amounts of that asset. So that's why it really would pay to get a consultant in to help you. The reason some people choose fractional share is that um, depending on what your how large of a profile you want to have or how, how much you value your privacy, especially large corporations, if you are flying in a um, fractional share aircraft, say NetJets, 
it is almost impossible to track the person who is in that aircraft flying because if you're tracking somebody based on their tail number, it's going to be a NetJets tail number. And we've heard stories in the past of companies snooping on other companies. They'll figure out what their flight pattern is in their private jet, and then they see that they're doing a deal, you know, in Europe. And um, people have sort of played the market that way. So that's complete peace of mind if you're in a fractional share because nobody can trace you. Right. So it's a very high standard of service, but it's sort of it's sufficiently generic that nobody can really tie that flight to you. Yeah. Nobody can identify because, you know, you can still type in somebody's tail number and pretty much figure out who that is. And I know that's a concern for some CEOs and high profile individuals. Yes. Good point. Now, I, I hear that some people, you know, their, their travel needs are so sophisticated that they actually have sort of combinations of, you know, they might have a fractional share or two, and then they might also have a jet card. I mean, I guess that's a pretty sophisticated consumer who's really looking at his or her travel needs and, and shopping the market for what fits it best. Is that right? Yes, that is right. I think with fractional, what is recommended is to start small. If, if you start in a half share in a um, large aircraft and then you find that you're not using it, you're locked into that to owning half of that aircraft. But if you start with a small fractional share, you can always add on, you can always upgrade. You can also buy a block of charter from another company and use that on the side. Um, some people even own their aircraft outright and then also will have a quarter share in an aircraft in a fractional program that they use when the aircraft that they own is under maintenance or out of service for some reason, or if they just want the flexibility of always being able to get in an aircraft and go where they have to go or send somebody else in their company or someone in their family. Um, and that way you're never grounded. Yeah, good point. And I, I want to pick up on that point about being assured of getting a certain type of aircraft in a minute, because, you know, I was looking at the sort of equivalent hourly rates of fractional ownership by comparison with what you can get in the open charter market. And the fractional flight hour rate seemed kind of high to me. But I guess there are extra benefits, um, such as you're only paying for the actual occupied hours. And I guess you have certain assurances about availability uh, of the fleet. Is that is that right? Yes, that's absolutely right. People who have fractional shares, they're not doing it because they're saving money. They're doing it because they value the consistency of the product. Um, they want to be able to get the aircraft that they want when they want it on, you know, in a short period of time. They want a very consistent level of service and they're willing to pay a premium for it. If that's not you, you should just charter. Yeah, good point. And of course, there are some alternatives to fractional ownership um, beyond charter. For example, I've looked at companies like VistaJet, and they have all sorts of programs where they're, you know, they're packaging up hours. They even let you lease a share in an aircraft, as, as I understand it. And, um, you know, I guess as you evaluate those, you have to consider all sorts of other factors like, you know, tax implications and your, you know, your business situation. But it just shows you what variety there is in the market. Yeah, that's right. And um, leasing is something that is, it's interesting because people are doing that. And um, sometimes it is so that you don't have an asset on the books. Um, but also maybe you don't want to be super locked in for five to 10 years with a fractional share. And you also don't want to own your own aircraft. Um, so leasing is worth looking into. But again, that's why it's very important to really consult with a financial advisor and an attorney and figure out exactly what the right solution is for you. Yeah, that's a good point. You can imagine that scenario where somebody signed up to a fractional program and then months later they're doing their taxes and the tax attorney says, gee, I wish you'd told me about this. You know, now we've got kind of a difficult right. situation to resolve. But there yeah. we go. Uh, all right. Well, that's interesting. Now, uh, you know, there will be some people who will say, no, I've really got the private aviation bug. You know, I've got the money. I want to just own my own aircraft. Um, and that's fine if you can afford it. But what sort of considerations do you have to have? I mean, you know, you're not just buying the aircraft, you're buying everything that goes with it, I guess, as, as well. So what do you have to consider? Yeah. Owning an aircraft has a lot of advantages, which is, first of all, it's complete 100% freedom in every regard. You can get the plane whenever you want. You can decorate it however you want. You can leave your own things on board. You can choose your own pilots. You can, you can choose everything and you have complete control. On the other hand, it requires a lot 
of diligence in terms of getting the crew, getting somebody to manage it in terms of keeping up all of the compliance and all of the safety requirements and the maintenance. And um, there are management companies that you can hire who will handle all of that for you, but you have to be parking it in a hangar. You have, so it's, that's a lot of headache unless you're really all in and really want the freedom of having, you know, your own bed and having it configured exactly the way you want. Yeah. So it's a, it's a level of concern and worry that goes beyond just having the money. Essentially there is safety considerations and, and so on, I suppose. Yeah. Yes. And that's a good point. You mentioned aircraft management. There are companies, as you say, that will, you know, kind of shoulder all that worry for you and hire the pilots and maintain the aircraft. And am I right in saying that one other advantage with management is that potentially that company can charter out your aircraft to other people and essentially therefore spread the overall cost of, of the money you're spending on the aircraft? That sounds like a pretty good benefit if it suits your circumstances. Yes, that is a benefit. And that can get a little complicated. Again, you really have to look into the the tax implications and what how much you're allowed to do that and how much you can actually write it off and, and how that helps you. Um, but it, it can work for sure if, let's say, you're only really flying like two months out of the year or you know exactly when you're going to need the aircraft, then you can give that aircraft to the management company to charter out. And that is a way to recoup some of the costs. Well, this is really fascinating. So clearly, you know, there's plenty of choice out there, but it's quite complicated choice. And, you know, just because you're highly successful in one walk of life and you, you've, you've earned the money to fly this way doesn't necessarily mean that you can you can get there without the help. And that's where the, the specialist legal advice comes in and the technical advice and, and so on. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks. We've, we've learned a lot there. And if you need to take a deeper dive into this topic, Jen's Business Jet Traveler can help you at bjtonline.com. You can read articles by experts on how to maximize the investment you're making in private aviation. You can search the BJT directory for details on reputable service providers, and you can check out which aircraft might suit you best. And you'll also hear about some of the successful individuals who are already flying this way, and it's quite inspiring, I have to say. So, Jen, thanks again for your advice and your time, and thank you, everyone, for watching. Okay, thank you, Charlie. Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.